1900. Here comes Final Jeopardy, please. 19th century novels. Think about that. Make your way to back and forth the clue. Hello, Buzzy finds himself in an unusual position tonight. Welcome to the final wager. I'm Keith Williams. Uh, first off, I gotta say, it's ridiculous that Alex asked for more specificity after Buzzy gave Ireland. Ireland was a possible response. I mean, there are only two possible responses when you say dairy. Uh, why you would ask for more is just completely beyond me, and... If Aaron loses this game, I would definitely have grounds to, I think you would definitely have grounds to contest that to some extent. I don't know, how much is that worth? 1200 So Buzzy would have a lot of that, isn't that? He'd still be in contention, but uh, would Megan still be in contention? It doesn't matter. Aaron's a good player. I'm guessing she's going to put this one away right now. Uh, <clears throat> let's see here. 24-4. It's fun that we have three players involved here. Oh, wrong side. 8,000 for Aaron if... Uh, wait, no, that's not right. Is it right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, 8,400 if she's wrong. So Megan's got to wager everything. And uh, on the downside here, that's going to be 3,800, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. 3,800. So for Buzzy to cover Megan, Megan's got 14-4, that's going to be at least 2,200. But now we get to the mind games, and we have not had mind games in a long time. Go orange. Uh, if Buzzy goes to this 3,800, he's going to have 16,000. So if Aaron thinks he's going to wager small for some reason, then... She could go for at most 400, which you know wouldn't be a bad wager. It'd also keep Megan locked out of it. Uh, but that's it for Aaron. If Buzzy thinks that Aaron's going to do that, he could go for everything. Oops, not 16-4. 12 2. Uh, yeah, that's it. But at least, whatever that is, they're 4,600. Pretty good game tonight. I was impressed with Erin. She got a lot of good gets. That Australian thing, that book, or the monster, or whatever, the film. The thing that I still can't remember the name of. I'd never heard of it in the first place. That was good. Of course, I seem to be pretty bad with Australian pop culture or history or anything like that. So if you're playing me in Learnedly ever, give me three points. In the meantime, I'll go study up and uh, try to improve that category score. Uh, Buzzy, very complicated with the intro. I wonder if that took some wind out of his sails. He did all the this, this. I feel like I'm trying to do the hand jack. This, 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 and then with the eyebrows. Or was it just one eyebrow? I can't remember. Not quite Matt Jackson-esque with the... But still his own thing, and, uh... There was a Good Morning America interview with him, I believe, on Friday morning, and I have not watched it yet, so I need to do that after this is done. I'm also going to watch 500 Questions, which is much better this time around than last time. Is the category. Here is the clue. The Gold Bug, Edgar Allan Poe's story about the search for Captain Kidd's buried loot, helped inspire this 1883 novel. 30 seconds, players. Good luck. Can't be Treasure Island. Uh, Treasure Island was insane. I think I the right thing. Oh, I'm thinking of Robinson Crusoe was 1709. I mean, Treasure Island makes the most sense if that's the right time frame. I mean, I'm like, getting everything mixed up, too. Who knows? Oh, Aaron looks excited. Megan, we come to you first. Let's take a look at your response. What is Treasure Island? Robert Louis Stevenson's book. You are right. And uh, you add 7,000. Right. That gives you 14,200. So everyone's going to get this right. It's just like the end of Buzzy's run. He had 12,200. He will add to that if he risked anything, and I'm sure he did. He risked 8,000. He's in the lead at the moment with 20,200. Aaron Delaney is an English professor. This <laughs> is a fastball right down the middle, and she gets it. She hits it out of the park. Did she risk it up? Yes, she did. She is our new champion, 24,401. And 
And Bucky Strong is going away with about 155,000. So we'll see him in our upcoming tournament of champions. Ooh, upcoming, huh? Does that mean it's going to happen very soon? That'll leave his off center from Buzzy's podium. Anyway, uh, very good run, Buzzy. Congratulations. Looking forward to seeing you on Good Morning America. Uh, you get to choose a future week's color scheme. It doesn't have to be next week, but if you're watching, send me an email and uh, get the details. Again, thanks to Andrew Powell for choosing this week's color scheme, the brown and orange. And uh, I'm looking forward to an Andrew Buzzy rematch in the TOC Finals. That would be awesome. Of course, right now there's no one else with more than four wins, so they would be probably the favorites to advance the farthest. But we'll see. There's plenty of time. It could happen in November. It could happen in February. It could never happen. It could happen in May. I don't know. I can't imagine they could have a different tournament in November this year because they've had college this year. They're going to have teens in September. And uh, teachers, they've had, they could have some other vanity week. I don't know. We'll see. I'm not in charge of these things. There's probably a good reason for that. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your long weekend. Uh, we'll see you Monday, which is... Actually, you won't see me Monday, but I'll do the video on Tuesday. Enjoy, and uh, we'll see you whenever we see you. Right here on The Final Wager.